Hello, everyone. Uh, good day. Uh, this is Pratik, and uh, I work as a solution engineer at Lambdatis, and I will be your host for the session. It's a great pleasure of mine to introduce you with our speaker, Max Schmidt, who is going to talk to us about making testing fun with Playwright. Today, uh, in the session, we are going to discover the fun side of testing with Playwright to perform end-to-end -end test automation. Our speaker, Max Schmidt, is a senior software engineer at Microsoft, who is an active contributor to the Playwright. Max is passionate about open source and uh, developer tooling. Max is dedicated to improving end-to-end -end testing for web application and making their setup seamless. But before we move on, a few suggestions for all our participants. At the end of the uh, session, we would uh, take in the question. So feel free to add uh, those questions in the side of uh, QA section. We may not be able to take all the questions, but don't worry. We have a Lambda Disk Imagery thread uh, also going on where we would be posting the answers to these questions as well. Now, please uh, join me in welcoming Max Schmidt. Over to you, Max. Hello, everyone. Uh, so first things first, uh, unfortunately, Debbie wasn't able to join, so I will fill in for her. Uh, yeah, she got a little bit of a cold today. So yeah, hello, everyone. Welcome to LambdaConf. Uh, let me see if I can change the slide. Yes. So uh, the talk is about making testing fun with Playwright. In the first few minutes, we are going to take a look at like what is Playwright for the folks who never heard about Playwright before. And then we go over like from creating a Playwright project of like how easy it is to also like how to use the Playwright tooling to debug locally, to debug in the cloud. And later on, we will go a little bit about over our best practices and so on. So let's get started. Uh, that's me. I think uh, the gentleman already introduced me very well. I'm working on the Playwright open source project since like two and a half years from now. And uh, yeah, so what is Playwright? Playwright is reliable end-to-end -end testing for modern web apps. So anything which runs in the browser, you can test with Playwright. Uh, so it's not limited to like the JavaScript framework which you use. You can use any, uh, yeah, like any browser as well. So we work like with all the Chromium browsers, we work with Google Chrome, uh, we work with uh, Microsoft Edge, we work, we have experimental uh, betas going on for Electron and for Android as well. We work with Apple Safari, so with the foundation which they use under the hood, which is called WebKit, you can use as well, and Mozilla Firefox. We work on any platform, so all the three major ones, Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac OS, and we have one API. So one API means you write your test once and it works across all three dimensions. Uh, we have full isolation. So this is one thing which differentiates us with competitors. So if you write like one test, which for example, uses a service worker or sets some local state, like local storage, uh, it will never ever infer, infer with other tests. Uh, yeah, we have a fast execution model and we have a lot of powerful tooling. We will take a look at the tooling in a second. So with tooling, just to name a bunch of things, we mean like HTML report, the VS Code extension, the recently launched UI mode and all these things. We are multi-language, so you can choose what you prefer. Uh, TypeScript and JavaScript, this is where we invested most of our time because that's where our user base is right now. But you can use also Playwright in Python, .NET, and Java. We expose the library here. So uh, what else? So let's get started with our first uh, tooling section, which is like the VS Code extension. It provides a way to install, run, write, and debug tests from VS Code. And this is, as of today, the easiest way of getting started with Playwright. So let, let's start using the VS Code extension. I will jump straight into VS Code. And this is a, a pretty fresh VS Code installation. So we have here on the left side, we have no files at all. We have no Git repository. We have only one extension installed, which is the Playwright test for VS Code extension. And what this gives you is, as I said, you, we, the easiest way of getting started with Playwright. So you can just go into the command palette and invoke the install playwright command. So you can do this either in your new project or your existing project. In both cases, it will work. 
So let's go through this very small wizard to add Playwright to our installation. So let's pick the browsers. I would like to test on all three. And I like to use TypeScript. So I'm not a JavaScript person anymore. I prefer TypeScript. And there is a add GitHub Actions workflow. We will see later on what this gives us. So let's just click on OK and see what happens. So what this will do is it will, in our case, create a new NPM project. So we see these files appearing here on the left side. And it will install Playwright, and it will install the browsers. We see a little bit more helpful output here. We will ignore that in a set for now, because I'm going to tell you about that. And let's just close it here. So let's, let's jump immediately into our example test file and go over it. So the example test file does a few things. First, we define like two tests. Let's look at the first test for now. Uh, the, the, a test has a title, as you all know, right? We want to identify a test. We can also structure tests with test.describe. It's very similar to what Jest is doing, for example. And then we have a test body. This is what I'm highlighting here right now. The test body becomes like, gets a page instance here available. And then we can do certain things on a page. A page instance, you might ask, because other solutions don't have that, is like very comparable to a browser tab. Imagine you have a browser with two tabs, right? And let's say on one tab, you log into google.com. And then you open another tab and you go to google.com. You're logged in, right? So this is because both tabs underneath have the same browser profile. This is what Google Chrome is doing, like for all you who are using a normal browser in your daily life. And Playwright has adopted this concept. We call it like browser context instead of browser profile. And we have them in memory. So to summarize, there is a browser context at the top. And a browser context is like a browser window. And it has multiple pages under the hood. And they share all the states with each other. And each test, as I said before, is isolated with each other. So this test has an own browser context and this one as well. So let's, let's uh, look at this page and see what we are doing. Let's look at this test. So first, we go to playwright.dev, and then we do something. We, we say, like, expect the title to contain a substring. And what this is doing is, like, in the first part, we are awaiting expect. So this is an asynchronous expect measure to, ha to have, like, a title of a regular expression. This regular expression does not have any, uh, any like, stored or end defined. So it's... It's simply like a contain, right? And then uh, this is what we give you. So when these expect assertions, for example, this one and this one, we call web first assertions. This is a very important fundamental concept Playwright has to offer because they do, they retry over, over again, either until the condition is met, for example, the, this uh, page has a title or the timeout is reached. So let's just run the test and see uh, about what I was talking about the whole time. Let's uh, bring this back how it was in the beginning. So we run it and we see passing. You, you might all ask, why is it passing? And where is the browser, right? It's browser automation. And the answer is simple. Playwright by default is fast, as I said, right? And we run headless. And headless is much faster than headed. And you all run your, brow the, your browser test on the CI headless. So if you want to see something, you need to run them headed. To do that, you can just go here in the testing panel and click on Show Browser. Let's run the same test again and see what happens. It was pretty quick again. The browser stays open on playwright.dev. And the test isn't doing much, right? Test is just navigating to playwright.dev and expecting that the, title has, uh, the page has the correct title. So let's go over the second test to tell you a little bit about, like, let's call it stage two of Playwright test, a little bit more complex. So we do the same as we did. We go to playwright.dev, and then we do and click. And we do and click not like a, as with like a CSS selector or an XPath, which uh, we don't recommend, actually, because they're not the really like user-facing, right? Imagine you're a, a, a user. The user never knows about which CSS class or ID or the XPath uh, a certain element has, right? The, the user only cares about like, how is it looking from the accessibility point of view, right? That's why we were pretty inspired by 
the testing library and the team, especially like can see dots, and they invented something called role-based selectors. So we, we brought this concept to Playwright ar around a year ago, I think. And that's why instead of identifying elements with like an ID or an XPath, we do page dot get by a role. And a role is much more accessible, right? In this case, we say, give me an element with a link, which is a link and has the text get started. And then click on this element, right? This is what the user sees. A link for a user is a text which he can hover over and click. And that's pretty unique. So we provide a lot of more of these roles. We can take a look here. We provide like uh, a common one or like a heading, uh, a button here somewhere, and a text area, right? These are like, I think, text area, uh, text box, pretty, uh, pretty common ones. And we do this to identify elements. This is what we recommend. And then we do the same. Instead of like uh, identifying here with an XPath, we identify here by like a give me some heading on the page with the text installation. And we use, again, one of our special assertions here. And we want to make sure that um, heading on the page with the, the text installation is visible. So this will, again, as I said before, retry over and over again is there a heading with the text installation? And if not, it will retry until the condition is met, so it's visible or the timeout is reached. Let's run this again, or let, let's run this as well and see how it goes. So passed as well, very cool. So we, we have our show browser here. Let's go back to our browser and uh, open the browser here. Let's put the browser here on the right side, I think like this, and the VS code on the left side. And then I want to show you what, what uh, is really interesting, what we did. Um, finding the right locator is always hard, especially when you're in source code, right? But Playwright for VS Code, what it gives you is like locator highlighting inside the source. So let's uh, put VS Code a little bit more to the left. And we have this uh, get the get started link, or no, click the get started link locator. And as soon as you hover over here, or not this one, I think this one, yes. As soon as you hover over here, we will highlight it here on the right side. And not like an old version, we can also change it to find the right locator. Let's say uh, mm, we want a heading with the text uh, installing playwright. So we were just installing playwright. So it's not this one on the right. And if there are no elements, it does not highlight anything. And if we just say install, it will say, oh, Max, there are three headings, right? The first one here, uh, it's a one out of uh, three, the second two out of three, and there's probably one in at the bottom of the page. Let's see, uh, and yes, here, heading install three out of three. And this is not a unique locator. And Playwright would actually throw, if you try to click, uh, so if you try to click an element, which is multiple times available on the page, it would say, hello, uh, it's not a unique locator, try to make it more strict. This is the strictness. Uh, so let, let me see what else we offer inside VS Code. We went over the show uh, browser feature. Uh, we also got pick locator. This is really similar. Instead of like specifying in Playwright a locator and it gets highlighted in the browser, uh, pick locator is you you pick anything and you will get a locator generated for you. For example, here, the community tab is a, is a link element actually with the community text. You can just click on it and you will, you will get the locator back inside VS Code and you can just cop, uh, copy it by clicking enter and it's in the keyboard and the clipboard. Uh, so now we got locators, but what about like a whole test, right? Let's write a test maybe. So there's this playwright side, documentation side on the right side. And let's see what we can test here. Uh, let's reload this. Uh, let's go maybe the community and there are ambassadors. What else? Mm, okay, so so there's Debbie. Let's maybe write a test which goes to playwright and then clicks on community and then ambassadors and make sure that Debbie is still our uh, uh, still on the page listed, right? That's very important. So uh, let's just go inside VS Code and click the record new button and see what happens. 
So uh, I will move it again a little bit to the left and I will click record new. So what this gives you is like in VS Code, it will generate a test or it will first create a file, in this case, the test dash one specter TS and then says recording. And on the right side, inside our browser, it uh, is a blank screen and everything, what we will do inside this browser, it gets translated into uh, playwright test commands. So let's just go to playwright.dev and it adds magically a page.go to on the left side here. And then we want to click on community and then on ambassadors, it adds three, two clicks now. And then I will just click on Debbie's name for now because like the playwright code chain isn't capable yet uh, of doing assertions. Assertions are really hard to make them uh, nice inside code chain, but we will use a click as like a, a way of generating a locator. And then we can like uh, click on cancel and we will use like this click element to create an assertion out of it. So we have like this get by text click and we will just modify it a little bit. So let's do a wait expect here and say to be visible. Uh, yes. And let's try to run the test and see if it's passing. Yes, it's passing. So th this looks now like a simple test, but in reality, it's like checking a lot of things, right? Imagine this is a more complex application. Right now, this is a static application. But in reality, you have a login maybe, and then with such a simple test, you're checking that your database is correct, that like it's correctly deployed, and all these things. Cool. So this is uh, our code chain. You can invoke code chain also with like the terminal and so on. Uh, on the left side, we have a file picker with like a tree structure in VS Code and so on. Uh, let me go back to our presentation. We went over install, over running tests, writing tests, and, and debugging tests with like the highlight. Um, these are just the videos of something's not working. Uh, locating elements, quick, uh, uh, sh quick overview about where we went over. Uh, yes, picking elements from VS Code, you can go over elements and so on. A code gen test generator. Cool. So next feature I wanted to talk about is UI mode. So over the last two years, we got a lot of requests from our community. Hey, Playwright, can we have like a watch mode, right? A watch mode, just make dash dash watch and we will all be happy. Hey, Playwright, uh, uh, would it be possible to have a VS Code extension also for other editors, right? Like ChatBrains products or so. And uh, we, we love to listen to our community, right? Our community is extremely diverse. We have a lot of customers who want to stick with their workflows and that's that's what we did. We listened and we created UI mode. So UI mode is a way to watch tests and uh, time travels through them. So uh, let's see it in action. So to invoke UI mode, you just go into the terminal and you do npx playwright uh, test dash dash UI. And what this gives you is a, is a new window like we had before. And uh, here on the left side, we have our tree structure of all our tests, really similar to what we have here in VS Code, as you can see, since it's actually like a VS Code extension replacement, sort of. And on the right side is something which we call trace viewer. Let me start with like just running one test and then uh, I will tell you about the features. Let's run our uh, test, which we just generated maybe. That might be a good one, yes. So. Let's start with showing you what's on the right side. On the right side is something which we call trace viewer. And trace viewer is essentially time travel debugging. It's a great way to like uh, take a look on like what was your test doing? Like how was the site behaving before an action, after an action and during an action? And it's especially helpful when a test is failing in the cloud on your CI CD server, right? Because like back in the past, it was like, imagine you have a test, it's failing. You sometimes just see test time out and you don't see anything else. This is like uh, really hard to debug. And then the second stage where you thought, hmm, this click wasn't working, it's already more helpful. And then you maybe saw some videos, right? You had videos, but essentially you're interested in like the whole page. 
in like the, which is called a DOM snapshot. So you want to take a look at how the HTML was behaving. So this is what Playwright Trace Viewer gives you. On the left side, you see all the Playwright actions, a go to and a click and another click. And on the right side, you see this DOM snapshot. And it's not an image. It's like something which you can first pop out and also interact with. You can just say inspect. And you can interact here with like your browser developer tools and see in this case that this GitHub has the class anchor, anchor with sticky bar and so on. So this is one of the features which is like uh, very valuable for our customers to look at these DOM snapshots. And this is like now a uh, snapshot which was popped out. If the snapshot is popped out, it's really easy to work with because then you have it bigger, how big the size was actually, and so on. Uh, at the top, you get something which is called like a timeline view. So based on all the actions which were happening from like the browser launch to the context creation, uh, to all the clicks and fills and so on, which were happening, you see in like images how the site looked like. And uh, you see the before hooks, you see if you're a little bit more of an advanced user, you see the test steps if you have a little bit more complex architecture and so on. Um, yeah, you have, the, you have access to pick locator as well, like you had in VS Code. So you can just say, like, give me a locator for this GitHub element and you click on it and you see uh, that like uh, this is a heading with the name GitHub direct link to GitHub. But this here on the right side is Trace Viewer, and you get this also on your CI. And on the left side, you see uh, the file tree view. So let's let's try to use watch mode and let's try to debug a test maybe. So uh, we had this test which checks that Debbie is visible. So let's maybe watch this test. We could just click here on this watch icon. And let's go into our source file and we can just click this file. It's an open in VS Code button. And this will jump straight to VS Code. And let's break it and see how to debug it. Let's say I want to make sure that Maybe uh, someone, maybe Peter Smith is visible. And I save the file and I go back to our uh, Playwright test, to our UI mode. And we see the test already started running. As you saw, maybe the loading bar spinner. And it was uh, waiting and hanging here for five seconds. And uh, now the test failed. So this is a very fast feedback loop. That's how we call it, to get feedback of how the tests were actually written and executed and so on. So in this case, the expect timeout was got reached. It's a five second timeout for expects, which we have configured. You can, you can specify all the timeouts along and uh, we have a whole document about that. Mm. So yeah, it says like timed out 5,000 milliseconds watching for expect. And uh, in this case we see, oh, there is no Peter Smith on the page. So yeah, this is a UI mode, basically. Mm, let me jump back to our slides. Uh, here's a fallback video. Cool. So let's do a very quick demo about like pushing to GitHub in the last few minutes, which we have. I think we have like seven minutes left, if I see it correctly. So let's close UI mode. And uh, integration with like your continuous integration provider is always really important, right? Because you want a short feedback loop. And uh, we, we, this is one of the ways, or not ways, like uh, things where we invested a lot into it so that you can very quickly start from zero to I have something running on my CI and especially run the CI tests along with my actual application changes, right? Because uh, this, the uh, application regressions usually happen where you actually, when you actually change source code in, let's say, your PHP or Node.js Express backend. So that's why we, by default, add a GitHub workflow, which you see here. So let's just go here to our source control tab and say initialize repository and say like initial commit and commit this and let's uh, stash all these files and uh, commit this and let's say public branch and uh, let's say we want to publish it to a private uh, GitHub repository and it's uploading the files and it's available on GitHub. And uh, ideally this now already triggered the GitHub Actions workflow. So we can go to Actions 
And yes, indeed, it said like initial commit, we can take a look at the workflow. And what this is doing is like, we have a very minimal setup, a very minimal setup there. So it's installing dependencies and installing the Playwright browsers and then running the tests. And as I said before, debugging on CI, really high priority. So we, by default, upload artifacts by default. And artifacts, in this case, is the HTML reporter. Uh, HTML reporter isn't something which I was showing today yet, I think, uh, which I didn't show yet. I think we still have enough time to give you the demo. But it's basically a list of all the tests with their artifacts in a very nice written form that you can very quickly uh, de debug it. So let's go back to our uh, test run which is running since 50 seconds. It's already installing the Playwright browsers and uh, looks like the browsers are already getting installed. And before it was, uh, as I showed you in the workflow, installing the NPM dependencies. And uh, yeah, so now it's running the tests, nine tests across uh, three projects. So it's three tests in total, I think, the two example tests and the one test which we wrote. And ideally, I think two tests should pass and one should fail. And uh, let's take a look at that. Should not take that long to fail because the expect timeout should, should hit. And then ideally, we see like a HTML report artifact. So these live demos are always a bit risky, but I believe in our demo goal today. So let's see. Uh, yeah, so while this is like running, I can already open our documentation under playwright.dev uh, where we uh, describe every little feature I went over today. So we started with like writing tests and how to get started over like running the tests with like UI mode and you can also run them in the terminal and generate the test. We have videos that we created and code gen, which you can invoke either via CLI or via uh, VS Code. And then the trace viewer, which I touched briefly, which was the right part of UI mode, which offers this CI debugging and time travel debugging uh, experience, and then UI mode and GitHub Actions, which I was looking at right now. Uh, we, we also have a document about HTML report, yes, here, uh, which describes what I'm doing right now in the background uh, about like waiting for a failed test and seeing this HTML report, this is how the HTML report lo looks like. We have, in this case, like three failing tests and three passing tests. So uh, yeah, let's see uh, how this is doing. Oh, ideal. So if we go to run playwright test, we see now that uh, we had six failing tests. Oh, more failing tests than I thought. But let's see, maybe we can debug it. And the artifacts got uploaded, right? So, and right now it's completing something. But let's go on summary and try to consume it. So, we have this Playwright report, it's 13 megabytes. And uh, let's download it and open it. We have this Playwright report, let's use the latest version. And uh, I will copy this into our, uh, into our Playwright folder, which I had. Let's watch this one. And here we can now do npx playwright uh, show report and then the playwright uh, report directory. And what this gives us now, ideally, uh, could not determine executable to run. Interesting. Uh, move playwright report. Save. Let's remove this. I know what I did, a typo, yeah. Uh -huh. So yes, so this is this CI debugging, which I mentioned, right? So we had these uh, six fading tests and three passing tests. And, the, and uh, the passing test, you see what it did. Uh, we did not have tracing enabled for fa uh, passing ones, but for the fading ones, I think, when we click on the get started link, in this case, you see uh, the error, what was going on. And for the other tools, 
as well. You can then go to retry one and then you can see, oh, we got a trace and you can click on the trace and you see that it was failing with a two uh, be visible to be visible for and it was waiting for a get by text Peter Smith, but there is no Peter Smith on the page. So yeah, so this is essentially CI debugging. Uh, yeah, so let's wrap this up. Let's go back to our slides. Uh, uh, yes, here we go. Uh, last but not least, Playwright is open source and free. Here on the left side, our 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 uh, npm downloads. I think we are at two point five or three million right now. Our GitHub stars. If you like Playwright and what we do, uh, star us on GitHub. I think we have around fifty to fifty-five thousand stars right now. We get paid in stars, so every star helps us. Um, Join our Playwright community on Discord. We have, I think, around 10,000 members there or 5,000. I don't remember the, the number, but a lot of people. And then uh, last but not least, more resources. Playwright, uh, what maybe you didn't know, cross-browser web testing and automation framework. All the documentation I was showing today was is on playwright.dev. We are open source on GitHub. And if you have questions or bug reports, find an issue on GitHub. And uh, yeah, github.com slash Microsoft slash Playwright. On the right side, there is our Twitter link, our Discord link, and uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, we provide res uh, release videos for every release which we do on YouTube. So there we will outline what we did during this uh, release and go over the features. So if you like what we do, uh, follow us on YouTube, Discord, or Twitter. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, happy to answer the questions. Thank you, Max. Thank you so much. It was a really wonderful uh, you know, uh, session, and it was really informative. And UI mode is, is the best part, which I love, uh, because I, I can understand you know, the debugging is, is the one of the most critical part when it's come to the QA automation. So yeah, so we uh, do have the questions. And uh, just glad to know that we are actually having uh, more than 1,600 people uh, in this particular session. And uh, yeah, let's move to the uh, some questions which uh, people have asked. So uh, the first question uh, which we have right now that uh, is there any possibility play that will support mobile automation and alternative to the APM for native apps? Uh, good question. Yeah. So uh, as of today, we support Android testing in like an experimental stage. So you can on one hand interact with the Chromium like a Chromium uh, window, either like a web view or like actually Google Chrome on Android. Uh, but you, you have, I think, also like uh, some testing to click buttons on apps. But as of today, like uh, our scope is everything what runs inside the browser is like Playwright scope. So right now we are not investing into mobile device testing. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, the ne next question which we have that what are the advantages of using Playwright for cross browser testing? Uh, for what? For cross uh, browser testing? For, yeah, for cross browser testing, just like if they want to test their application with Firefox, Chrome, and other browsers. So, uh, so, so I would say, if we, we get this question very often, so I would argue that our tooling which we provide, especially like how to get started, how to write the test, and also how to debug the test, is like uh, really convenient, right? So. Uh, I would recommend to take a look at our solutions and take a look at competitors and what fits for you the best is what you should use, right? You are the person uh, which writes the tests in the end and you need to be productive. So if you don't like Playwright and you think uh, it's too complex or so, go ahead. But like we, 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 th we think our tooling is like uh, really easy to use nowadays. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, there is another question which I like the most because uh, there is like, you know, most of the users are also asking that how they can actually automate the multi-factor authentication, right, which is provided by the Microsoft or the other, uh, you know, tools. So uh, as the playwright, you know, provide the browser context feature. So uh, is this helpful for uh, for the users to having the multi-factor uh, authentication via playwright? Um... I, I would start answering the question with like multi-factor authentication is, for example, you try to have a Google login, right? And you log in with Google to your actual application. And um, we saw in the past people try to authenticate using Google, try to authenticate using OAuth. Uh, no, not OAuth. I mean like uh, Auth0. But these providers usually don't like to get out uh, to 
don't like to get uh, automated. They have it in their terms of service, actually, and they don't Correct. allow it. They don't allow it to that level that they will simply uh, say you are an automated headless browser. So uh, usually you cr create like the the service accounts, right? And the, and or like uh, generate the, the tokens directly, and then you can automate your application. So we are still exploring the MFA testing uh, stories. We know that a lot of customers are either struggling with it or would love to have it. So if you have any feedback or need something or think you have an idea, which how should we do it, feel free to raise an issue or ask us on Discord and so on. That is awesome. Yeah. So there's another question that uh, how does it implement parallel engine and multi-threading? Uh, good question. Um, I, I didn't touch it in the talk. So how we do it, or let, let's start maybe answering first by uh, what do we provide? So first, you can do like dash dash workers and some number, which will increase the workers running on the same machine, right? Imagine you have 10 tests with like uh, workers uh, five. Each of the workers is getting two tests. And if you have fully parallel enabled. But this works to some extent really well until your CPU is too overloaded, right? And then you want to, instead of like having it on the same machine, you want to have it on multiple machines. This is what we call sharding. So then you would, for example, split it in, in five shards. And then on each machine, you would get two tests. So this is what Playwright offers. But how do we do it? Uh, we, we internally, if you're interested, uh, uh, fork the node process and uh, run then multiple node processes uh, for the dash dash workers implementation. Okay. Yeah, so uh, there's another question which we have, like uh, as you explained very well, that we have a native functionality of reporting in the playwright itself, which is the HTML reports. So is it possible to have the uh, time step inside the you know uh, run results for the reports? Uh, hundred percent i think it's a feature request which is open as of today and i think we even assigned it uh, to a release so if you if you want this feature uh, upload it don't comment with plus one upload it <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah basically we add features based on uploads cool cool yeah uh, so there's another question uh, which is that how do you see the future of the playwright uh how do I see the future? It's a very, it's very, very open question, right? Uh, ideally, uh, Playwright will shape the way how end-to-end -end testing in is done. Uh, and it makes, like competition is always great, right? Without any competition, end-to-end -end testing would not be as easy as it is nowadays, right? Imagine how you did end-to-end -end testing of web applications 10 years ago. Right. So ideally, I would more say how to see the future of playwright in, or how do you see the future of end to end testing. And then I hope that it's even easier than it is right now. So uh, make it easier, make it less flaky, make it harder to do things wrong. So the best practices are done by default. That's how I would answer probably. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's one more question which we have is regarding that, you know, uh, as playwrights support multiple languages in the frameworks as well, right? So uh, which is the, uh, you know, like preferable language framework would you suggest? Is it like uh, PY script uh, or the JavaScript? Um, Playwright is a very large product with like a very small team. And we learned that most of our audience is like using JavaScript and TypeScript. That's why most of our features are available in like the Node.js platform, right? So if you have the option to use JavaScript and TypeScript, definitely use it. It will make your life easier. You get HTML report, VS Code extension, UI mode, uh, I think at least what the other languages don't get. So I would recommend JavaScript and TypeScript. Cool. I guess, yeah, uh, that is all we have uh, for the Q&A. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Max, for, you know, uh, this, for this wonderful session and uh, we're loving it. And thank you, audience. Uh, thank you for, I hope this session would be helpful and a very informative for you all of you.
And I also want to remind you all that it means that all the sessions are be recorded and will be available on YouTube channel. So you can go back and listen to them again and share them with your uh, peers. Happy testing. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.